kind of ignored reason for a while, stupidly. And then, uh, I don't, I think uh, Justin Martin, who's another guy on our label, started making house music on it right when we were just getting our party started here in San Francisco. And I saw what he was doing, and I saw how easily all the, the instruments and effects were tied together in the mixer. And so I, I had all this like really elaborate, like modular synthesizer kind of stuff set up. And I was like, well, maybe I just need to simplify a little bit. And I started using Reason. And I still, it took me a while to get into it, but I started using Reason. And I never stopped using Reason since. My name is Barkley Crenshaw. We're here at the Dirty Bird Mothership office slash studio in San Francisco. I also got I also go by the name Claude Von Stroke for productions and DJing. The devices and reason I, I usually use a lot of Dr. Rex and I don't use a lot of the synth unless I really go in and really program them quite extensively. Uh, so it's usually stuff that I bring in, like I'll play stuff on outboard gear and record it and then kind of bring it in on a Dr. Rex or I'll bring it in on a NN19 or an NNXT and use the samplers for sounds that I've made somewhere else. So it's a lot of sampling. I use a lot of the sampling. I checked out Thor a little bit. I haven't really gotten, I haven't made anything with it. But I've used it, I think, to make a couple like atmospheric things or something. I, I haven't really gotten deep into it yet. I just got four recently, reason four. My favorite setup is Mixer with nothing attached to it. <laughs> I always start with nothing. There's something really nice about being able to have your whole project like all encompassed in one piece of software that makes it a really, I'm really able to go in and fine tune the music before it gets put out. Like every little bit, all the automation, every tiny little programming thing, it's much easier to do that all in software than to be fixing loops in hardware and that kind of thing. It's just it's just better for if you really want to sound polished. I think that uh, I think running your own label is kind of the only way to do it these days in independent dance, dance music. It's kind of all, all, almost every big artist has their own label because that's how you get your music out there before anyone knows who you are. It's really the only way to break through unless you're just totally amazing from track number one and all these other labels want to sign you up. It's, uh, it's a lot of hard work though. It's not so easy, but it's fun. In the end, it's really good. I get asked a lot what software I use and people are always surprised. Less and less though, but people are really surprised that I use Reason especially when I told them certain tracks that I made all in reason. It's, it, it's, it's not surprising to me at all because when you look at reason, it's kind of like in the 80s and 90s, it would have cost you like $200,000 just to have a, all that stuff all tied together. Maybe even more, maybe it's even impossible with automation. So this is the sounds that I usually use. So what I would say here is because I was having problems uh, with how the notes were resonating, I had to put them on two different, two different devices for the same patch so I could make sure that the low notes were resonating so that, as you can see, they're well, you can't see there, but in here you can see that they're split on two patches so that I can EQ the top notes and the bottom notes or whichever notes I was having a problem with. They get a different EQ. 
a lot of times I'll take whatever sounds I'm using, I'll, sa I'll sample them out of Reason, then I'll do an effect on the sound, and then I'll load it back into Reason again and reverse it or something like that and that will give it a, a nice transition effect like for example if we can find long note this is an example of where I've taken a note that I've made in Reason and I put a long reverb on it and then I've reversed it and then I put it an octave down and it just makes a tr really cool transition sound that just grows So when you hear that in the song, it's just like a nice, mm -hmm. you'll hear it's a nice way to get from section to section. <laughs> Build some tension. Mm -hmm. uh, then the other al al aspect to the melody is the voice line right here what I've done here is I've taken a sound from an NXT and I've loaded it in and then I put it through the vocoder and then I've also lo loaded a vocal sample from my wife who's now who did this it's just chopped up the effect is whenever one is on, it cuts off the other one. Whenever the voice comes on, it cuts out it cuts out the sampler. And it's all this crazy routing. It's all going through this vocoder. There's the voice. There. Mini popcorn. So they're both getting routed through the same effects, and they're knocking, and one's knocking it. It's kind of like a side chaining effect, but I can't. I don't even know how I did it, but I did. It's they knock out each other, and so you get the really nice effect of when one's on, the other one isn't. <laughs> It's just a patch that grows with the filter throughout the track. I matched it up with this patch, which also grow, so they grow together. This is a straight sample, and then this one is made uh, on an NXT, and I just keep raising the filter and lowering it throughout the whole song, and it also builds tension. And all this other stuff is just basic backbeats. There's like 10 different backbeats. As you can. And none of it really sounds that good until you put it all together. Uh -huh. That's me going, uh-huh, and then lowering it about an octave. <laughs> and that's it. So that's the track, Who's Afraid of Detroit? I'm sorry I didn't explain it better but I haven't looked at it in quite a long time. <laughs> and even I can't remember everything, but I tried.